Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel Anna Orange where I build a lot of 3D metal models and show you how I do it today on the table, something rather unique, something that was sent to me by a viewer, by a C. Lewis, thank you very much, a Kleins Kettenkraftad, you know honestly I don't know how to say that exactly properly and the more I try the more I'm going to ruin it, but it looks like a cross between a bike and a tank motor uh, a motorcycle in a tank sort of thing and well this is a HK slash Genesis model HK model I'm not exactly sure done a little bit of research don't know a whole lot about it I, there's a website on the back for hkgenesis.com and I've gone there and they show a lot of different models a lot of unique models some metal earth knockoff type models so kind of questionable there but, you know, this was sent, apparently, uh, the individual who sent this to me accidentally got two and sent me the extra one to build for myself. So, awesome. I will definitely check it out and uh, give it a shot. It looks like the front is in German, and this, you know, definitely looks like a, a German idea. I did some translating, and according to Google Translate, that says small chain wheel. So, sd.kfz.2 small chain wheel. Makes sense. Very descriptive title. Otherwise, everything on the back is either mostly in English. Uh, looks like the only other language is just some symbols up here in some sort of Chinese. But yeah, let's take this to the table, open it up, see what's inside, and uh, put it together. Hey, let's check this thing out. Let me spin it around. Whew. This is an interesting little craft, and I and I looked up on Google, looked around a little bit to try to understand what it is. The SD KFZ2, better known as the Kleins Kettenkraft and Kraft Kraftrad HK101 or Kettenkrad for short, plural. I'm not going to go into that. Where it means Ketten means chains or track, and Krad is a military abbreviation of the German word Kraftrad the administrative German term for motorcycle. So, chain motorcycle or tracks motorcycle, something like that. Started his life as a light tractor for airborne troops. The vehicle was designed to be delivered by Junkers JU-52 aircraft, though not by a parachute. The vehicle had the advantage of being the only gun tractor small enough to fit inside the hold of the JU-52 and was the lightest mass-produced German military vehicle to use the complex I'm not even going to try. Something overlapped and interleaved road wheels used on almost all German military half track vehicles of World War II. And there is a little picture of it in use, I suppose. If that even focuses and comes out. Yeah, that's it's an interesting little thing. I've never seen one of these before. Neat little contraption we've got there. Germans came up with some interesting stuff sometimes. But hey, if it works, I suppose, let's open it up. This nice plastic case we have here. And we have some metal sheets. There's at least two in there. And we have the instructions tucked away. Let's get the plastic almost old style CD DVD case thing out of the way. That's an interesting plastic. Unfold the instructions. It's blank on the back. Big yellow sheet. I'm going to fold it in half like I usually do. Look at it myself for a second. Because it looks like there's English and there's some sort of Chinese, Mandarin, I don't, I'm not sure. Looks like you have a fairly standard sheet here with Line drawing, somewhat colored in model, some warnings and cautions, a, a, mo a sample model piece of talking about insertion tabs, fold lines, and insertion holes. Q, oh, not QR code. Legend, blue circle, um, let's see, insert tab, bend 9 degrees, green triangle, insert tab, and twist. So that's the same as the Metal Earth. A little example of how to do it. And some needle nose pliers and scissors are helpful for assembly. I wouldn't use scissors, clippers. But not standard scissors for getting parts off the tree. And then a drawing of one of the sheets. 
with the parts listed. So same style, same same sort of thing. We have another sheet here, so I'm guessing this is two sheets, and I'll open those up in a second and look at them. And all the parts are numbered so you can find them. And then the assembly method, or assembly flowchart, if you will. Starting with part one, two of those, so one times two, so you build that, or shape that two times. Goes in the end here, part two times two, so those connect together and go on the end of part three, and it folds up and these these tabs twist and these fold and it's kind of a lot in one little picture but that's how you do it and you end up with that so same same deal as like metal earth model or peace cool model or other models you have your assembly show flow chart which just shows you how the parts come together and how they fold this seems to be a bit condensed but interpretable and then I guess once you get down here you would just jump down to this quarter or the bottom half pick up over here probably follow it just the same. So everything is crammed onto the front side. There's nothing in the back. So it's a little bit condensed, a little bit crammed up, but I don't think it'll be difficult to really interpret. Maybe, maybe not take that long, maybe. Kind of hard to say. Let's look at the metal sheets real quick because I'm curious as to the quality or the, the thickness, thinness, you know, how flexible I'll only be able to tell so much by holding them, but I'm curious to, to get a feel for them. Because I can say a lot about how this model is going to end up. Interesting that they come in plastic. It's annoying though sometimes when they... And I've just torn it, so there's no reason that. But it's also very difficult with the sticky. Alrighty then. Alright. Seems to be a, it's not a terribly flimsy sheet. It's got some thickness to it, so this may work out pretty good. Maybe a little bit thinner than Metal Earth, but not too much. I think this will work. There's one metal sheet, a little bit longer. Two metal sheets, no color. Most of the engraving is on one side. Seems to be a decent thickness. Kind of mess around with one part, but yeah. Talk a little bit about some tools, and then we can start putting this together. Let's take a moment to talk about tools. This is a very basic set of tools that I use in pretty much every build. I've got a very standard set of tweezers that I use very frequently. I've got some precision tweezers, a, another flat set here, and a couple of pointed tweezers. One of which I've ground the tip down just a bit to make it a little flatter for grabbing tabs. I have clippers that I use to get the parts off of the sheets quickly and easily. It's better than bending and trying to break them off. And then a couple of different pliers, a flat nose set and a long needle nose pliers set. They come in handy for bending in different situations. When it comes to shaping rounded parts, there are many options. I used dowel rods for a long time. I sharpened the ends of two of them with a pencil sharpener. These two are great for making cone shapes. Another option is a cheap drill bit set. This set has quite a few different sizes to choose from. Another option is a set of step mandrels. For shaping ball shapes or dome shapes, I've got this fondant set, I believe it's called. I found it by accident, but essentially it's got different sized spears on the end of a stick. So it's easy to hold on to it while you put apart and on it and shape it around. Unlike a bead or marble that could accidentally pop out from under you and cause problems. Ring pliers or round nose pliers can be found with jewelry making tools and work wonderfully for curving delicate and or hard to get to areas. I have a sculpting set here that I occasionally use and they have all kinds of different shaped ends on them. Some flat, some angled, some spoon, there's a couple of hooks. They're useful for reaching in and bending and pushing and pulling tabs and shaping parts from the inside. I've talked a little bit about tools. I've got the basics to get me started or directions or assembly flowchart or instructions, whatever you want to call them, and the sheet's ready to go. Let's put this thing together.
As usual, it helps to bend angled tabs so that they all point in the same direction towards the next part. I noticed pretty quickly that several times the tabs seemed to be a little short and stiff and difficult to twist and secure. I found out later that I had used part 4 here instead of part 7, but they are so similar it's hard to tell the difference. I wasn't able to twist some of the tabs inside tightly enough, so I bent them over instead. The next few steps are pretty repetitive so I will skip ahead. Just be sure you use the correct numbered part for the location that you are in and you place the end wheels so that the tabs are facing away from the center. And the center wheels tabs are lined up parallel in a straight line along the center.
I didn't line all the wheels up properly and that will cause issues later. From here, the instructions get concentrated and possibly confusing. There is a lot of information in a small area. It took me some time to work it out, and even then I made a mistake or two. One big thing I missed is that the first set of wheel assemblies is facing away from you. In other words, you are looking at the back side of the assembly. I did not realize that and placed all the detail facing the wrong way. I figured it out later when it came time to add the assembly to the main section and had to fix it.
It is here that I realized I had put the first wheel assembly set together facing the wrong way, so I took it apart and flipped the sides. And now I realize that I did not align the side wheel tabs properly and I have to fix that. While it seems like these tracks will fit either way, the tabs seem to fit one way better than the other.
I was not able to get this last tab to bend over cleanly and securely, so I twisted it.
I had to make some angle adjustments to get the tabs to line up on the front wheels. I was really surprised with how close these tabs were together and how easily that they would bend out of place that I didn't have a tougher time getting tabs lined up and the parts together. For the center wheel piece, I bent the two tabs up on one end, inserted the center piece into the wheel, and bent up the other two tabs to hold it in place.
It took me a little time to decipher how some of the parts in the front wheel assembly fit together. Not to say the instructions are in code, but there is so much information in such a small spot it gets a tad confusing. I was especially confused with what to do with parts 35. It took me a while to grasp that they are to be curved. In hindsight, it seemed quite obvious, but at the time, it was a lot to absorb. I ended up putting part 33 on upside down. I was pretty sure at the time that I had it right. The pedal was quite stiff here. I had some trouble getting things to bend just along the bend lines. I nearly completely closed the headlight, but I realized I need to keep the front open so I can twist the tabs that attach it to the front end.
I was going to twist both tabs here, but there's not much room. I ended up bending one tab and twisting the other. To get this piece in, I had to bend the flaps on one side over and fold them back up and over the tabs holding the part in place.
Normally I have no problem pushing over tabs with my fingernails, but these tabs are just too stiff. It was a bit of a fun challenge shaping this cockpit rider area. I didn't want to fits around with trying to get all this part attached in such a tight spot, so I opened things back up to give me more room. What I didn't realize at the time was that the shifter was supposed to go through this piece and that I would need to keep the area closed to attach everything. I bent these pieces the wrong way, which was just a poor choice on my part. When I tried to correct the bend, the piece broke.
More fun shaping. This took numerous tries to get it attached. The center part keeps wanting to spin and move around, making it difficult.
In all the excitement of joining the two halves, the gear shifter fell out. Oh, this is not going well. And I give you the Kleines Kettenkraft Rad, I believe is how you say it. I've looked up some videos, just a few. Because one of the interesting things about making these models, especially when it's something I don't know much about, interesting little side effects, it makes me curious to learn a little more. So I've learned a little bit more about this model. The very unique looking vehicle, if you don't already know anything about the Kettenkrad, as it's called for short, it was a vehicle, I believe originally developed for forestry service, I think I read somewhere, but it was used during World War II as like a light personnel craft or, or carrier and tug on uh, different situations. It was the first tank type track I think the Germans developed and they later used that in actual tanks. I think this was before the tank. And I found an interesting little video about one that was restored and a little bit more information about it. And I'll put a link in the description down below if you are curious like I was. Interesting little tidbit. The fact that it looks like it's the front half is a motorcycle doesn't actually, that one wheel doesn't actually steer that big thing. There's a mechanism built into it that basically applies the brakes to the left or right track to steer. So it's designed that way to be intuitive and easy to understand and train people. You can just hop in one of these things and know how to drive it because it's got a stick shift like a car and turns like a motorcycle and it's really easy to understand and learn how to drive. So I thought that was a very interesting tidbit, but back to the actual model. This model took it's about four and a half hours to build. It took me quite a bit longer than I expected looking at the directions. It looked like it was a pretty simple build, but such was not the case. It was very condensed instructions and that led to some confusion on my part. I guess I should have been a little bit more careful it being not a Metal Earth model and a little bit different format than I'm used to and it being so condensed there were some things that I, I missed and overlooked which caused me trouble later on in the build that I had to go back and correct but it was definitely a fun learning experience a very different sort of build being that it was a, a different company that made it one of the big things that stands out to me that I had a lot of trouble with is the metal just seems to be stiffer which you would think is a good thing, sturdier, won't break easy. Some of these knockoff and cheap models that you can get out there are not sturdy metal, don't bend right, and break easily. Though I did have a problem with a broken tab that was mostly my fault, or a broken piece that was mostly my fault. I did find it unusually difficult to twist the tabs. They seemed a little short and very, very stiff. And I work to try and get tweezers that are a little tougher that can twist tabs in tight places without giving. And I was having trouble with my tools wanting to flex open and not actually twist the tabs, which caused me some problems with things not being as secure as I would like for them to be. Namely, later when I finished the model, the front broke off and I had to repair it. But part of that is not being able to secure it right, which turned out to be a good thing because I put it on wrong to begin with. Now with the directions being condensed into a small area, it's all on the front sheet. There is a, a lacking in clarity. The big thing is which way to face stuff. There's nothing on there that I saw that said face the engraved side this way or that way. And for the most part, you can figure it out. But I did run into some trouble with assembling that second set of wheels that kind of go on top of the first set. It's all part of the same mechanism. But that top layer, the first set that I built, I built facing the wrong way because I didn't realize that that's the way it was showing. It was showing it facing away from me and so I faced everything incorrectly and had to go back and fix that. So that, that was some lack of clarity that I could have possibly looked ahead and understood and, and kept myself from doing that. But something to pay attention to with this model and, and most likely other HK models as well. Now I did, there's a couple of the small things that, that I just kind of missed that the directions handed at that I didn't quite catch, like the alignment of the wheels, I didn't quite catch that I should have been watching how the tabs lined up. And it does say that in there. I missed it. So going back, I'm not going to blame the poor instructions on that. It's my oversight. I had to go back and correct that. And I put the neck that connects the 
front motorcycle part to the rest of the body on upside down. Another oversight on my part. I wasn't paying sufficient attention. There's a bit of arrogance there because I thought I knew better and angled it the way that I figured it should go, thinking, well, these models, these directions are not very detailed, so I'm just going to have to figure this out, and I guessed wrong. And that, again, is my own fault, and I had to correct that. So I did go back and have to flip over, and I, I didn't record it because the video is long enough as it is, but I basically disassembled enough of the 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 front part to pull off that neck part, flip it over, put it back on, take the top half off of the rest of the tank, reattach the front, and put it back together. And the gear shift broke as well and fell out as I was assembling it, so I just kind of, after several attempts to try and work it back in there with into the holes and dab some super glue, and being unsuccessful, unsuccess the shifter was about to break off of the circular part. So I just broke it off, stuck it in the hole with a dab of super glue, and there you go. At this point, that's as good as it gets. And then there's a one piece on the back that I folded the wrong way again, my own fault. So combined with my clumsiness, which is part of what makes these videos, I make these mistakes so you don't have to, and some lack of clarity of the instructions. I had a fun time. But in the end, it's all done and doesn't look too bad. The gear shift is there, although a bit wobbly, and I'm not going to mess with it. Well, not wobbly, but crooked, but I'm not going to mess with it much in the little thing in the back is broken but this turns and seems to be fairly steady i'm not going to play with it very much thank you to chuck lunas on facebook for sending me this model he had an extra and sent it my way so i benefited from it thank you very much this is my first hk model and it's been an interesting experience and i'm glad to both have this model to build thank you and to be able to share it with others if you enjoyed this video enjoy these builds do consider becoming a Patreon supporter. There's a link at the very end of this video and in the description down below where you can find out more. As always, thank you for watching and keep on keeping on.